Hi everyone, Chris Natsky here with Black Belt Leadership Speaking and Coaching with your Mind of a Champion Tip of the Week on Facebook Live. I'm outside here, it's a beautiful day in Denver, Colorado, and I have to admit, as I'm doing this video for you today, I'm a little selfish. I'm really doing it for me. Uh, I figured if I gave you this lesson and I shared it publicly, then I would be much more inclined to follow my own coaching advice. Um, I want to chat with you today about the importance and something I'm really realizing um, recently, particularly as I'm doing a lot of self-reflection, on, on the importance of rest. Uh, I mean, I've got some great qualities uh, that have really held me and made me successful in the things that I do, just as I'm sure you have. Uh, but I also have some real areas of opportunity, and one of those is the ability to slow down and rest. Now, I'd like to think, you know, and sometimes I tell myself, um, I'm always active because I love the work that I do. I love serving people. I love speaking. I love coaching. I love teaching martial arts. I love all those things. But when I really get honest with myself, I realize that oftentimes the reason that I keep myself so darn busy is because I'm coming from a place of scarcity. That if I'm not keeping myself busy and I'm not always taking advantage of every opportunity, then what's going to happen is things are going to pass me by. And I did some real self-reflection this week because I realized I've gone another two weeks or more without a day off. And I thought, man, I really need to correct this. So it got me thinking about a story from my past that when it happened almost 20 years ago, it really impacted me. But like many lessons we have in our lives, we tend to forget them. It was back in 2000 and um, I was getting ready for the, probably at that point in time, the biggest event in my martial art career. I was getting ready to test for my sixth degree black belt. And like all my other black belt tests up until that point, I poured my body, my mind, and my soul into this. I mean, I had my grandmaster instructors flying into Denver. I had other master instructors here in the Denver area that are gonna be there at the judges table. Plus all my students are gonna be watching me. And, and the type of, um, of intensity I put in my training really reflected that. Well, what happened about a month before my test is I started really feeling worn down. And uh, so I went to my dear friend and my homeopathic doctor at the time, the late Gil Greiner. Uh, I love Gil. Gil was just an amazing guy. And he could always speak to me in ways I could understand. I always respected Gil because he was a competitive athlete as well. In fact, he was a former um, Mr. Colorado bodybuilder. And so he could really speak to me directly in a way that I could understand. And I really miss our conversations. So anyway, uh, I go in and he does his whole scan test on me. And he's looking at the computer screen. And then he looks up with this concerned look on his face. And he says, Chris, you're getting ready for a major injury, my friend. You're way over training. He said, I'm getting, you're my tear a hamstring or something. And he says, you really need to slow it down. And I said, Gil, I can't slow it down. I've got all my instructors coming into town, got this big test coming. He said, man, you need to slow it down. Otherwise, you're going to injure yourself. And then he asked me the question. He said, how many kicks, uh, you know, kicking techniques could you hold it down to each week in order to be ready for this test? He said, the number I'm getting is 100. And I said, well... You know, begrudgingly, I guess I can hold it down to 100 kicks a day. Now, in perspective, in those old days, I was doing between 800 and 1,200 kicks in a training session. I said, but I can hold it down to 100 a day. He said, no, a week. And I, I just went nuts, right? I said, I can't do that. And finally, he let me settle down. And then he gave me some words of advice that I still remember to this day. He said, Chris, you have to remember that rest is part of your training. Let me say that again. You have to remember that rest is part of your training. And I have to admit, he stopped me dead in my tracks. And I took his advice. And if you watched last week's video uh, on the power of visualization, that's where I really got into visualizing. I couldn't train physically, but morning, noon, and night, I was putting my ideas together, what I wanted that test to look like. And I probably in that last month trained the least that I ever had for any type of athletic event. But when the day came, I was recharged, I was revitalized. And up until that time, I had the best martial art test I'd ever done in my life. So what does that mean today? And why am I sharing that with you now? Well, like I said, I realized I needed to reboot this, this concept of my life. And I'm gonna give you some tips that I'm committed to doing going forward that might help you as well. And the first thing is, is I'm committed to getting adequate rest. Um, you know, for me, I feel best when I'm getting between seven and a half to eight hours a night. And, uh, and I'm an early riser, so what I realize is I have to get to bed at a good hour. 
And it's just so, so important to us because we tend to go, 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 go. You know, it's interesting. There's that old adage that it says that it takes 10,000 hours to develop mastery in a subject or a skill. But what they don't tell you about is the other part of that study, which is that those people that had that mastery by doing the 10,000 hours, they also slept or rested about eight and a half hours a day. They weren't burning the candles at both ends. They were moving intensely and then they were resting intensely. So adequate sleep. The next number two is I'm gonna schedule downtime in my calendar. I don't know about you. Hi, Tanya, how you doing? I don't know about you, but my calendar is like a black hole. Like, you know, nature pours a vacuum. So when I have space in there, I'll fill it with something. And uh, so what I really uh, believe I'm gonna do going forward, what I really intend on doing going forward is actually scheduling my downtime. And generally that's gonna be on weekends, but if I know that a weekend's gonna be busy because I have a speaking engagement or a seminar I'm gonna be teaching, I'm gonna actually plan those in the uh, weekdays of, of those days prior to the weekend. And then finally, finally, I'm gonna take some time to just be. Now that doesn't mean having this huge, long and extended times during the day, but maybe even five, 10 minutes where I get away from the computer, I'm not looking at my phone, I'm not reading anything, I'm just being. And I know that that's something that really recharges me. And it makes me think about uh, a story I heard about Thomas Edison. And he was uh, reported that every day he would go fishing and oh, there's a siren going off. They must like that idea. But anyway, he would go fishing. But the thing about his fishing is he would never bait his hook. He'd just throw the line in the water and he would just watch the bobber go up and down. He would just be. And it's the, you know, the legends has it is that's where he got his greatest ideas. So there are my three things going forward. What could you do a better job to really rest and recover so you're at your very best when opportunities arise? In fact, here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. I'm gonna ask you, first of all, as always, to share and like uh, this video, make your comments. But if you, when you make a comment, give your own ideas for how you rest and recover or how you're gonna plan on resting and recovering going forward. Because remember, as hard, as hard as we work and as much as we wanna accomplish, rest is part of our training. So thanks so much for listening, everybody. I really, really appreciate you. Appreciate all your comments, your likes, and your shares. And we'll see you next time on the Mind of a Champion Tip of the Week.